Welcome, I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In the previous lecture we studied the basics of accent in Paninian Grammar. Today we shall continue studying the subject in slightly more detail. In the previous lecture we saw how the accent is marked on the basic units namely Prakriti and Pratyaya and with the help of the rules how the Pada accent gets derived and how then it gets transformed in the form of the sentential accent. In this lecture we shall study in detail how the Pada accent gets constructed from the Prakriti and Pratyaya and how the dynamics comes into being, comes into play. So let us study this simple derivation first. We start with the verbal root crew meaning to do on both sides and then we add the suffix truch on the left hand side and the suffix trun on the right hand side. They, both these suffixes mean karta. But because this trun suffix falls in the adhikara, tachira, tadharma, tatsadhu karishu, this adds an additional shade of meaning. So the derivation kartru means one who does, that is a doer. But the same word kartru means one who whose habit it is to do, that means a skilled doer. How does this distinction of meaning get recorded as far as the word is concerned and here we see the accent playing an important role. So now this accent is derived with the help of the markers in the Paninian grammatical system as we see ch is a marker over here and n is a marker over here. What this ch marker does is ch is a marker because of 133 and then it gets deleted and 7384 applies and screw becomes kar and so we have cut through. Now this ch marker indicates that this final vowel gets accented by the sutra chitaha. So in this case through becomes udatta, therefore this ka becomes anodatta and marked with the horizontal bar below ka. Whereas in case of this trun, this na marker triggers the operation of initiadir nityam which makes the initial vowel udatta. So this k becomes a becomes udatta and this ru therefore becomes anudatta but it is coming immediately after anudatta. Therefore it is marked as swarita with a vertical bar on top of the letter. This is the difference. Now when you have the word kartru with the swarita sign on ru indicates that the meaning of this word is a skilled doer and when the through is not marked that shows that it is an udatta this means just a doer, doer of an action. This is how the accent distinguishes the meaning. This could be said to be the minimal pair as far as the accent is concerned. Now we take up the derivation of kartru with the final vowel being godatta, meaning one who is a doer. So here is the derivation, here are the 21 forms, so banta forms and then the accent is also marked. So in most of the forms this final udatta seems to be retained, karta, this a is udatta, kartarau, kartaraha, kartaram, kartarau, kartru, etc. everywhere the final of the word kartru is retained except in the forms which are shown in blue kartra, kartre, kartrohu and kartrohu. What happens in these cases is the word is kartru followed by the suffix a 
and a is anudatta and now because of this a this ru is getting substituted by a vowel. So an udatta swara is getting substituted by a consonant r on account of in the condition of in the environment of an anudatta vowel. This is what is happening in all these four cases and so as a result this anudatta vowel becomes the udatta and so therefore this retains the udatta as is shown over here without any mark. This seems to be an important dynamics that plays a very crucial role as far as the accent of kartru with final ru udatta. So here the rule udatta yano hal purvat comes into play where the vibhakti suffix is known as asarva namasthana starting from the sixth suffix in this case and elements known as nadi which come immediately after a yant substitution after a consonant in place of an udatta vowel are substituted by an udatta vowel. So here is kartru an udatta which for is followed by an anudatta vowel. Now here we have this ru becoming r preceded by a consonant. So t is a consonant which is also preceded by r. So we have three consonants over here r, t and r as is shown here also r, t, r. This final r is a substitute that comes in place of a ru a vowel which is an udatta vowel. Now this is an asarvanamasthana vibhakti which is anudatta. Now when this yant substitution takes place in place of an udatta vowel, this anudatta asarvanamasthana vowel gets an udatta. So this anudatta is replaced by an udatta vowel. This is what happens here. And so we get kartra finally accented. 61174 has a crucial role to play in this derivation. Now let us look at the derivation of the word kartru which is initially accented. What this means is a skilled doer. What happens in this case? The forms are more or less same where initial accented vowel is retained everywhere without a fail. So karta kartaru everywhere you will see k initial vowel remains accented. So the next vowels all of them they become anudatta. In the case of kartra bhyam etc the vowel that comes immediately after the udatta namely ru is termed as svarita bhya which is an anudatta which comes after the udatta is not marked but this is a prachaya this is an ekashruti. So is the case with all the vowels in the table of the 21 forms listed on this particular slide. Remember the word kartru over here denotes a skilled doer. This is how the forms will get accented in all the cases. And so the distinction of accent will obviously indicate the meaning distinction. The accent distinction determines the meaning distinction this will help in the interpretation of the word. Now what happens if we derive a feminine form from both these? For example, kartru which is finally accented which means a doer and kartru which is an initial accented word and which means a skilled doer. To these two words we have add this feminine suffix ngip which means e by 415. And so now ng and p in ngip are markers by 1, 3, 3, 8 and 9 deletes them. And so we have now kartru plus e in both the cases. Now once again we have this ru being substituted by r by ikoyanachi caused by this e which is an anudatta because it is a pit. Once again we apply 61174 which then substitute this anudatta e by an udatta e. 
and so kar 3 in this case becomes finally accented. And similarly in this case where k initial vowel is udat, here there is no change initial vowel remains an udat. So in kar 3 where final vowel is udat means she who is a doer and where the initial vowel is udat means she who is a skillful doer. Now let us look at the pada forms derived of kartri. So this is the word kartri with final accent indicating that this is a doer of an action and here are the forms kartri, kartriyau, kartriyaha and so on and so forth, kartriya etc. Now in these cases we will have 61174 applied once again. And the forms of the word kartri which have initial accent will not differ, they will have the initial vowel accented in all the forms. What is so special about these forms is that we also have the application of 824 which says udatta swarita yor yanaha swarito anudattas an anudatta vowel which comes immediately after the yan substitution replacing anudatta or a swarita vowel is substituted by a swarita vowel. So here we have kar 3 having this final vowel accented followed by an anudatta vowel au. Because of this au now this e is getting substituted by yan that is y. So we have kar 3 r t r y four consonants. <coughs> now this au which is an anudat will now be substituted by a swarita vowel. So now here we have kar triau with this au marked as a swarita preceded by an anudat vowel. This is the swatantra swarita we were talking about in the previous lecture. So if we go back and look at the forms where we have the Swatantra Swarita, Kartriyau, Kartriyaha and Kartriyau, these are the forms where we get the Swatantra Swarita. And these are the forms in, these are the forms in green which get the Udatta because these are the Asarvanamasthana Vibhaktis and these three they are the Sarvanamasthana Vibhaktis. That is the reason why they are getting the Swarita, Swatantra Swarita and in these the Anudatta vowel is getting the Udatta by the application of 61174. So 61174 applies in all the forms shown in green. What this means is once again the Vibhakti suffixes known as Asarva Namasthana starting from the sixth suffix in this case and elements known as nadi which come immediately after a yan substitution after a consonant in a place of an udatta vowel are substituted by an udatta vowel. So we have kar 3 plus a, a is a 3, 1. So kar 3 plus a, a is an udatta, this is udatta. Because of this a, this e will now be substituted by a consonant here. Therefore now this a will be substituted by an udatta vowel. So kartriya we will have an udatta vowel placed over here. Going back to the forms, we note that these three forms have the swatantra swarita and the green ones they have the udatta in place of the generally accent, non-accented sub form over here. This is how the accent dynamic plays a very very important role in the derivation of the words. Nothing of this sort will happen in the word kartri where the initial vowel will be accented. To summarize we can say that the accent that was stated on the suffix thru records different meaning conditions as well as different accent when added to a verbal root and a prasipadika is derived and the difference in accent is also visible when a feminine suffix is added. This is how history of an accent plays a crucial role in explaining accent at different levels. Now we shall study another important 
example which is of the second person pronoun yushmat and the accent marks on it. This is based on another important Sanskrit text that was composed by this person yours truly called Prakriti Pratyaya Vibhaga Nishchaya composed in the 1990s. So here you have Yashmad and all the accented forms for you and let us see how they get derived each one of them. The important sutra to remember over here is Maparyantasya which substitutes only the part up to ma of Yashmad and also Asmat. So the substituent could be said to be Yashma ending in ma or Asma ending in ma. So Yashmat plus am and Tva is substituted in place of Yashma. So you have Tva plus ad which remains over here from Yashmat plus am. And so then Tva a becomes Tvad and so on. Similarly, you were replacing Yashma and ad remains, Yuya and ad remains and so on. Another important sutra is Sheshe Lopaha. So Sheshe Lopaha states that the is deleted in the remaining cases when it appears immediately before the following suffixes. Which are the remaining cases? That is 1 1 and 1 3, 4 1 and 4 3, 5 1 and 5 3 and 6 1 and 6 3. Otherwise there are two substitutes stated by 7 to 86, 87 and 88 and 89. The is substituted by A in following cases 1, 2, 2, 1 and 2, 3, 2, 1 and 2 and 3, 3, 2 and 3, 3, 4, 2, 5, 2 and 7, 3. And the is substituted by Y in the following cases 3, 1, 6, 2, 7, 1 and 7, 2. So leaving these cases in the other cases the is deleted by Sheshe Lopa. Now let us look at each step. Yashmatsu and here we have Yashmad Am and then we have Tva Ad Am and Tvad Am then the is deleted so we have Tvam. Similarly we will have accent marks. Yashmad is marked finally accented so U is shown as Anudat with the horizontal bar below it. Su is a consonant so not marked which is replaced by am but because this is a sup a is marked as anudat and so now yushma will be replaced by tva and so we have tva ad tva is anudat and ad has got anudat and am is anudat now this a and this a and anudat a and anudat a they become one a by sandhi Atogane and so now the a substitute which comes in place of both of these is also udat by the sutra ekadesha udatena udatta. So we get tvad with udatta marking and am anudatta. Now this the gets deleted and so we have tv udatta followed by am where a is anudatta and so there is sandhi once again ami purvaha purva rupa sandhi. So in place of an anudatta and anudatta, one vowel comes which is udatta. Therefore, tvam is marked as udatta, which is not marked by any symbol. This is how the accent on tvam will get derived from yashmat su. Similarly, when we derive the 1 slash 2 form yashmat plus au, this is how it will get derived. On the left hand side you will have the derivation of the word and on the right hand side you will have the accent derivation as well. So you have yashmat plus au where is, wherein yashmat is marked with the final udatta, au is anudatta, au gets substituted by am, am is anudatta, yashma gets substituted by yuva which has got two vowels, both of them are anudatta because they come in place of an anudatta. Ad is marked with udat, then there is a sandhi and because of ekadesha udatte na udattaha, this is an udatta vowel, so we have yuvad plus am, then this the gets substituted by a which is marked as anudatta. So a consonant which is substituted by a vowel 
which is an anudatta primarily because this is already marked as an udatta. But now there is will sandhi, va and a, udatta and anudatta and their resultant form is a sandhi a, this will be udatta because of ekadesha udattena udatta. And then once again this udatta and this anudatta, their sandhi is marked once again as udatta because of ekadesha udattena udattaha. So yuvam will have this particular accent at the end. This is how yuvam will be derived and this is how the accent on yuvam will be derived. Next we go to 1, 3 which is yuyam. So here we have yashmad plus jas. Jas is anudatta on in which place am is the substitute comes in and am is also anudatta. Now yu ya comes in place of yashma as a substitute, yu ya both vowels are anudatta, ad has got a udatta. Now there is a sandhi between this a and this a, a in yu ya and a in ad. In place of both of them, this a in ad remains, which is anudatta. So you have yu yad with final a udatta. Now this the gets deleted, so we have yu ya plus am. Finally, this a uh, in yuya and a uh, in am, they have a sandhi, purvarupa sandhi, and so this is a kadesha sandhi. So ekadesha udattena udattaha. So this a uh, remains udatta. This is how yuyam will get the udatta form. Similarly, we have yushmad plus am, and here also we get an important case where this. Yashmad plus am, yashma gets substituted by tva which is anudatta and so then there is sandhi, tva ad ekadesha sandhi, so tva becomes udatta, this the becomes, the gets substituted by a which is an anudatta and so tva a we get an udatta vowel tva which is udatta and then there is this sandhi of this tva with a and that is also ekadesha. So it will get udatta. So tvam has an udatta vowel. Similarly, yuvam. So you have the similar steps in derivation where yuva is substituted in place of yeshma and then there is ekadesha. So this yuva a becomes udatta. The gets substituted by a which is an anudatta. And so it gets ekadesha with a. So it gets udatta. And once again, there is an ekadesha of a and a, which is udatta because of ekadesha udattena udatta. This is how we will derive yuvam. Similarly, now we go to yashmad plus shas to derive 2, 3. So we have yashmad plus shas, and then this initial vowel gets substituted by na, and then this the gets substituted by a which is anadatta. So then there is ekadesha. So you have yashma plus nsa. Then this sa gets deleted and you get the form yashma. Similarly, 3, 1, yashmad plus ta. And this is obviously anadatta because of sup. And then yashma gets substituted by tva which is anadatta. And ad which is udatta. So there is ekadesha which makes it udatta. This a is anudatta, it remains anudatta. This the gets substituted by ya and finally we get tvaya which is initially udatta. Then we have yuvabhyam derived in this fashion, yashmat plus bhyam. Yashmat gets substituted by yuva which is anudatta. A is udatta. Then we have yuvad where final a is udatta. Then we have the substituted by a which is anudatta and so this udatta and this anudatta have a sandhi so we get a as udatta. Bhyam is anudatta, this anudatta comes immediately after anudatta therefore it gets a svarita. So you have yuva bhyam with a as udatta, yu anudatta, bhya a as svarita. Similarly yashma bhi very simple in this case. Yashma, the becomes anudatta, a, and then it gets sandhi, yashma, 
A is udatta, this is anudatta obviously, so yushma bhi is middle accented. Similarly in tubhyam, we have yushmat plus ngi, pratyaya is all anudatta, tubhya is the substitute in place of yushma which is anudatta and so then there is a kadesha with a, so this a gets udatta, the is deleted and so we get tubhya with final udatta followed by a, then there is a kadesha, so we get the form tubhyam with final a udatta. Where tubhya maiha ungai comes into play and this anudatta is then converted into an udatta. Similarly, yavabhyam same as before. Now we have 4, 3, yashmat plus bhyas, where bhyas is substituted by bhyam. So bhyam is also anudatta. Now this the gets deleted, so we get yashma and bhyam with middle vowel accented, udatta, yashma bhyam. In 5, 1, we have nasi replaced by at, and so yashma gets replaced by tva, which is anudatta. Then there is ekadesh as usual, so tvad plus at, the is deleted and then there is once again ekadesha, ekadesha udatte na udattaha, so we have tvat accented. Yuvabhyam as before, yashmabhyam as before. 6, 1, you have yashmad plus gnas and so now we have tava plus ad. Now here, we have tava mamau nasi coming into play and therefore this tava which was derived as before that gets transformed into tava with initial accent. Same was the case with tubhyam where tubhyam ayyam ngai comes into play and this anudatta is then converted into an udatta tava. Then yuvayoho. And here you have the same procedure, you were substituting yashma, ad retaining its accent and then there is ekadesha, yuvad has an accent, da is substituted by ya and so os is anudatta, so yuvayoho is middle accented. Then we have yashmakam and we have yashmad plus am and am is substituted by akam. Both these vowels are anudatta now and so we get this the deleted yashmakam is middle accented. In tvai you have similar process yashmat as yashma getting substituted by tva which is anudatta, a is udatta, then this the getting substituted by ya and so tvai retains the initial vowel as accented. In yuvayoho the same procedure as before, yashmasu also, more or less same procedure where this the gets substituted by a which is an anudatta bubble and then there is ekadesha, therefore this a becomes udatta, so yashmasu has middle vowel accented. Here are some observations. A substitute of bigger size inherits the accent properties of smaller substituent. A vowel substitute in place of a consonant is anudatta in this case as there is already anudatta in the pratipadika. Even if at which is anudatta is deleted, other accent rules come into play and the same accent is achievable. There are some grammarians which delete the ad and not the the just. Even then same accent is derivable by some other dynamic accent rules. To summarize, the accent on the pada forms of the first and second person pronouns can be derived thus in detail. In the similar fashion, forms of all words can be derived. Accent rules go hand in hand with word derivation rules. Multiple interpretations of the wordings in the rules are accommodated in the accent derivation rules as well. This is how we can derive accents of padas and then using some using such dynamic rules we derive the accent on the sentences we will study the details of such accents and accents on compounds when we do the advanced course 
of Paninian grammar. Now before we close, let us have the Mangala Charana composed by yours truly at the beginning of Shabda Sutra and this is Vamanam Shivaramam Cha Shri Guru Abhivandya Cha Devim Vacham Sarojastham Amalam Shabda Rupinim Shabda Sutra Bhidham Grantham Apurvam Vibudha Priyam Malhara Kurute Mata Pitro Rashi Prasadajam and I repeat Vamanam Shivaramam Cha Shri Guru Abhivandya Cha Devim Vacham Sarojastham Amalam Shabda Rupinim Shabda Sutra Bhidham Grantham Apurvam Vibudha Priyam Malhara Kurute Mata Pitro Rashi Prasadajam And today's five sutras taken from 8.3 and also 8.4 First of all, eight three they are Matuvaso Rusambuddhau Chandasi, Atrana Nasika Purvasya Tuva, Atoti Nityam, Anunasikat Paronaswaraha, and Samaha Suti. I repeat Matuvaso Rusambuddhau Chandasi, Atrana Nasika Purvasya Tuva, Atoti Nityam, Anunasikat Paronaswaraha, Samas Suti, and eight four. Rashabhyam nonas samanapade, Atkupangnum javayepi, Purvapada saudnyaya magaha, Vanam puraga mishraka sidraka sharika kotara grebhyaha, and Pra niranta sharekshu plakshamra karshya khadira pi yukshabhyo asaudnyaya mapi. And I repeat, Rashabhyam nonas samanapade, Atkupangnum javayepi, Purvapadat saudnyaya magaha, Vanam puraga mishraka sidraka sharika kotara grebhyaha, Pra niranta sharekshu plakshamra karshya khadira pi yukshabhyo asaudnyaya mapi. <coughs> Thank you for your attention. This is the last sutra of the Ashtadhyayi. Uh, uh, with this, we close this course on the introduction of Paninian grammar. At the end, I would like to thank all of you for your patient hearing. I would also like to acknowledge the debt I am in of my gurus whom I mentioned in the Mangala Charana, the debt of my parents whose blessings have taken me thus far and the support I have received from all my students and family without which I could not complete this course. I thank you all and thank all these from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And a special thanks to NPTL and all Ravi Vijay, Devendra and Tushar. Thank you. And Bharati Madam. <coughs>